updated the 13th of November 2017, 730 AEDTA lot of energy is being expended debating whether Australia should lower its corporate tax rate to remain competitive with the rest of the world. Donald Trump's planned U.S. company tax cut from 35 to 20 percent has reignited calls from big business and the coalition government that Australia's 30 percent rate for large companies needs to fall to 25 percent to attract investment. Whether that's true or not, a question the ABC's Andrew Robertson asked last week, the Paradise Papers show how the whole corporate tax rate debate is pointless and misguided. That's because most of the big companies, especially the multinationals, pay nothing like the headline 30 percent rate of tax. A Kerry researched report by Union United Voice and the Tax Justice Network found the typical effective tax rate of Australia's 200 biggest listed companies was only 23% over the decade to 2013. Free market think tank The Centre for Independent Studies says the effective tax rate for Australian headquartered companies ISNT that low more like 2,627% and is also internationally uncompetitive. Whichever one is correct, there's no doubt many companies pay a lower rate of tax than the headline. Some companies are masters at it, with a third of Australia's 200 biggest listed firms achieving average effective rates of 10% or less, according to United Voice. Tax office figures from 201,415 show more than a third of big companies paid no corporate tax at all. More than half the Australian listed companies had at least one subsidiary in a tax haven, perhaps explaining some of the savings. And the foreign multinationals are likely to be far worse they're generally bigger, already have global networks of subsidiaries and more places to shuffle their money to achieve the lowest tax rate. That shows up in U.S. Congressional Budget Office figures, recently cited by the ABC's business editor Ian Verender. The CBO report shows U.S. companies pay an average corporate tax rate of just 17% on their Australian earnings, and an effective rate of only 10.4%. That puts Australia in the cheaper half of countries for U.S. multinationals to do business in. Paradise Papers Unmasked Tax Secret Show Do Those Multinationals Pay So Much Less Tax Than The Headline Rate? There are several schemes that these firms can choose from to cut their tax bills, depending what industry they're in. A pretty simple one favored by firms where intellectual property IP is key, think fashion and technology as two examples, is transfer pricing. The Paradise Papers highlighted how Nike parks its intellectual property in low-tax countries and then charges subsidiaries in higher-tax countries huge fees for using it. The net result of this is that multinationals like Nike look like they're making very little profit in Australia and a lot of profit in low- or zero-tax countries. As tax expert Matthew Gardner told Four Corners, U.S. companies claim they earn $100 billion in Bermuda, but the island's entire economy is only worth $6 billion a year. Resources companies don't have a lot of IP, so they use marketing hubs for their transfer pricing. The Australian Taxation Office Auto is currently auditing Glencore for its Swiss marketing hub. Basically, the marketers in a low-tax country like Switzerland or Singapore take credit for adding a large amount of value to lumps of red dirt or coal they're sending from Australia to, generally, China. It's pretty hard for the auto to pin down exactly how much this marketing is worth opening up an opportunity for companies to overcharge for it and pay less tax in Australia. The other common way for multinationals to cut their taxes is by loading up their Australian operations with debt. Interest paid on those debts is tax deductible. It works even better when that debt is a related party loan. In other words, it comes from another part of the same multinational company. That related party, funnily enough, is often located in a tax haven like Bermuda, the Cayman Islands or British Virgin Islands. Interest the Australian company pays on its debts is deductible from its profits here and so not taxed, and if it goes to a zero-tax country then the payments aren't taxed there either, although there is a 10% tax on interest paid to countries where Australia doesn't have a tax treaty. The only problem with the scheme comes if the company gets too greedy. That's what happened to Chevron when it jacked up interest rates on its related party debt to such inflated levels that they were ruled to be uncommercial and part of a tax avoidance scheme. It's likely to end up paying a billion dollars in back taxes. Slap with a wet lettuce a billion dollars s like a lot, but it's mostly money that Chevron owed anyway. In that context, there's a logical risk-reward trade-off for big companies that favors treading the very edge of legality when designing financial structures to minimize tax. When you look at it, there's both a small chance of getting caught. The auto itself pointed out that there are 1,300 large companies operating in Australia and it can only really cover the market leaders, and only moderate penalties if you are.
In that context it makes perfect sense for Australia to slash its corporate tax rate, forget 25%, we could probably match the US at 20, but only if business leaders also back tighter tax rules and tougher penalties. Rules to prevent the offshore financing shenanigans outlined above need constant tightening to keep up with the creative accountants in the big four advisory firms. Moreover, not only should financial penalties for tax dodging at least match the plan new penalties for corporate malfeasance, three times the gain or the loss averted, but there needs to be the serious threat of jail time. As outgoing Australian Securities and Investments Commission boss Greg Medcraft told a business journalist's lunch in 2014 you have to lift the fear and suppress the greed. This is a bit of a paradise, Australia, for white-collar crime. The thing that scares white-collar criminals is going to jail and that's what scares them everywhere in the world. If all businesses want a lower tax rate, they need to be prepared to agree to severe punishments for those who already game the system to help themselves to one. The jail sentences should not just be for the employees who dream up the schemes or the executives who approve them, but also for the advisory firms, accountants and lawyers who aid and abet the rip-offs. Then you can have your 20% tax rate.